Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus is risen indeed, Jesus is risen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. ancient Christian tradition called the Rhesus Pascalis, which is a fancy Latin name for the Easter laugh. And the early church believed that Christ's resurrection was God's practical joke on the devil. And so what they would do is in the weeks after Easter, they would tell jokes and sing funny songs to join in God's great laugh at the powers of death. Now, you might be thinking, how come I've never heard of this tradition? Well, that's because over the centuries, these jokes got bigger and sillier and more elaborate. And so in the 17th century, Pope Clement X said, "Uh uh-uh, and forbid things because they were getting out of control. But this year, we all need more laughter and joy in our lives. So we are bringing back this tradition. You might say, we're resurrecting it. (laughs) So the deal is, if you record yourself telling a joke or singing a funny song, we will include one or two of those every week in our online worship during the Easter season as a way of all of us spreading God's Easter joy. So here is your first Easter laugh. The other day, someone asked, what happened to Jesus during those three days between his death and his resurrection? I mean, what was he doing? Well, let me tell you. After Jesus died, he went up to heaven. And Jesus was really curious to see what his father looked like. So he searched high and low all over heaven, looking for his father, but could not find him anywhere. Jesus went up to St. Peter, but as usual, Peter didn't know. Uh, He asked John the Baptist, who also didn't know. He asked the angel Gabriel, but even Gabriel didn't know. And then, in front of Jesus, from out of the cloudy mist, Jesus could see an old man shuffling towards him. And the old man was stooped over with bright white hair and a big, long beard. And Jesus says, Excuse me, sir, but who are you? And the man replied, I am just an old man in search of my son. And Jesus got excited. Maybe he had finally found his father. So he asked, old man, tell me of your son. And the old man said, well, he's pretty hard to miss. He's full of joy, likes to make new friends but he also has holes in his hands from where the nails used to be. He was nailed to a cross once. And Jesus could not contain his excitement any longer, and he screamed, Father, it's me! And the old man's eyes brightened. Is that you, Pinocchio? (laughs) I'm sure that your jokes will be much funnier, and I look forward to receiving them.
The first station, the earthquake. The earth trembled and was still. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The world did not remain the same. It shook, it moved, it quaked, it was opened. The same with the heavens. The resurrection changes everything in its path. Death becomes new life. Darkness becomes light. Despair turns into hope. We are no longer prisoners of sin. We are set free to live the kingdom life which Jesus calls us to. We can let the old ways crumble and fall to pieces at our feet, freeing ourselves and others to live into the glorious new world that Christ has opened for all of us. Break open our lives and pour your light into the night of our sorrow, that we may live in the joy of your resurrection, now and forever. Amen. The second station, the tomb. Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. It was the first day of the week, the dawning of a new creation. Jesus rose from the dead. No one saw this take place, but like the first apostles, we are sent out as witnesses of this wonderful event. Christ's death and resurrection becomes a pattern for our daily living. May we recognize the rhythm of Christ's redeeming love all around us. O oh Lord, grant us courage, like the women who came to your tomb early on the morning of the first day of the week. When fear and sorrow seem to overwhelm us, 
Help us to hear the angel's message. Do not be afraid. Amen. The third station, Peter and the beloved disciple. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Mary ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. The tomb was empty, a silent witness of God's salvation. Seeing the empty tomb, the disciples were filled with faith, hope and belief in His abiding presence. All the empty and lonely places of human life are precisely where the Lord of love shall be revealed. Lord Jesus, whenever doubt and grief overwhelm us, open our eyes to see your presence in our lives and help us to seek the future with hope and love towards you and each other. Amen. The Fourth Station Mary Meets the Risen Lord His sheep follow the Good Shepherd because he calls them by name and they know his voice. Alleluia! Alleluia! A reading from the Gospel according to John. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking, supposing him to be the gardener? She said to him, Sir, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But 
go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Over the centuries, Mary Magdalene became known as the Apostles to the Apostles. In other words, she was the one who was sent out to the ones who are being sent out. Because she was given the special calling to be the first to meet the resurrected Christ, she was the first to carry the good news away from the empty tomb. She was the first witness to announce the hope of new life. O God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice call us by our name, we may follow wherever he leads. Amen. The fifth station, the road to Emmaus. The eyes of all were fixed on him. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Now on that same day, Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Faith is a journey we all walk. The disciples left Jerusalem in defeat and disappointment. They had lost hope. All of us have experienced moments of despair and hopelessness. And then the risen Lord joins us on the road, even when we are headed in the wrong direction. He breaks open the word, helping us to understand the stories of our lives and how they fit with the stories of God's people since the very beginning. We can then continue along the road, nourished with new energy and commitment. O 
O Lord, open our understanding that we may gladly receive the hope contained in the scriptures and increase our faith. May we always walk in the joy of your resurrection. Amen. The Sixth Station, Breaking Bread The disciples knew the risen Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. Alleluia! Alleluia! A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. As the disciples came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they argued him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Journeying together leads to eating together. In the breaking of bread, we give thanks, Eucharist. More than a ritual, this meal helps us to see over and over again the risen Lord each week. He is the one who presides over all our journeys, setting our hearts on fire to serve those in need. What we have received, we become, and what we have become can be shared with others. We set out again on the road of life to respond to the hungers of the world. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the disciples in the breaking of bread, open our eyes that we may see him in all we say and do, now and forever. Amen. The Seventh Station, the Upper Room. Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The doors were locked, shut, bolted closed, and yet the risen Lord entered, cutting through their fear and filling their hearts with His peace. His love gives an inner peace and a deep wellspring of joy that the world cannot give. He invites us to seek this peace, to resolve human conflicts, and to transform this world one relationship at a time. O Lord, grant us your peace, 
and strengthen our faith, that we may live as witnesses to your gospel and rejoice in your presence among us. Amen. Station, Thomas. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the other disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is a part of having faith. Thomas's demands led him to touch the wounds of the risen Lord unafraid, fully embracing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Only by doubting did Thomas find a faith that was fully alive. Our faith may be tested by doubt and fear, helping it to grow stronger. This enables us to offer patience and understanding to those who are continuing to struggle, search and seek for God. O oh Lord, strengthen our faith and bring us to see you now and to rejoice in your presence eternally. Amen. The Ninth Station By the Sea The one who believes in me will do the works that I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in 
because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. After the crucifixion, the disciples returned to what was familiar to their old ways. But they couldn't manage to catch a single fish. Standing on a distant shore, the risen Lord instructs them to try a new approach. Suddenly, their nets are overflowing. He makes a meal for them, nourishing their souls and teaching them how they can be fed by making disciples in His name. Make us quick to recognize you in the midst of our lives. Give us ears to hear you asking us to cast our nets out, despite our disappointments and tiredness, that we may rejoice in faith and fulfill your purposes. For the sake of your love. Amen. The Tenth Station Peter We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the glory may be God's alone. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to John When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to the him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times in Jerusalem. Now Peter and Jesus are reconciled by affirming their love three times. Peter embraces his new purpose and mission to feed Christ's sheep. This teaches us that forgiveness is always available. Jesus forgives us so that we can become reconcilers and healers in the world. Only love can overcome guilt. Only His love and forgiveness can make us whole.
gracious Lord, when we falter or deny you, bring us back to you through your loving mercy. Open our hands to give that same gift to others and inspire us to seek the good for others. To the glory of your name. Amen. The Eleventh Station Commissioning the Disciples Their sound has gone out into all the world. Alleluia! Alleluia! A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Once again, the disciples are on a mountain with Jesus. Here he commissions them to take this message to the ends of the earth. We are the descendants in faith to this faithful mission. We are the ones called to witness to the resurrection today. We are called to speak this good news in our culture, allowing him to change our daily living and giving new meaning to our lives with the values of his kingdom. Lord Christ, you have sent us, your church, to teach, heal, baptize, witness, and serve with compassion. Help us to serve the world, trusting in your abiding presence, so that we may proclaim your love to all we meet. Amen. A rumor began to spread early that morning. It had been a terrible weekend. It was supposed to be a celebration, but instead of a big party, they'd had a funeral. And now there was a rumor that death is not the end of the story. It was now the first day of the week, so most people had gone back to their normal lives. Whatever normal means anymore. Work, school, chores, anything to get their mind off of their grief. But one of the young women had spread this unbelievable rumor that Jesus lived. The group of 12 were hiding out of fear that what had happened to Jesus would also happen to them. So two of them went to a nearby town to gather some information, and now a rumor began to spread 
about a stranger they had encountered on the road. He opened their minds to new possibilities, and this rumor continued to spread. Jesus lives. Now, it had been a confusing three days for everyone. Some of them could not stop crying. Others wanted to fight. And still others just wanted to go back to their old life. And then a rumor started to spread. Not only was Jesus alive, but he had entered a locked room and let the disciples touch his wounds. That rumor seemed too good to be true. And these rumors spread across the country like wildfire. And so too did more stories of other people encountering the risen Christ. And as they did, this sense of hope and joy began to spread as well. Because if God raised Jesus from the dead, yeah, then sin and death, they don't have any power anymore. Now, normally, We think of rumors as a bad thing, something that we shouldn't do or something that isn't true. But there is such a thing as a good rumor that changes how we look at ourselves and the world around us. Our faith began because of this one glorious, liberating rumor that Jesus is alive. And as people of the resurrection, we are called to share good rumors. Rumors like, no one is condemned by God for our sins. We are forgiven. Let's spread that rumor. Or rumors like, God rules this world. Not money or power and not even death. God's love is the most powerful force in all of creation and God's love always wins. Now there is a rumor we should be spreading. So the point is that even when we can't gather in church to ring our bells and sing our alleluias, we can still spread this Easter rumor with joy and hope. Psst, have you heard? Jesus is alive. So let us today go and spread good rumors of our risen Lord so that we can all say, thanks be to God, alleluia. Although we cannot be at Jesus' tomb on this day of his resurrection, the symbols of Easter help take us back to that momentous day and time. This cross is a symbol of sacrifice, victory and God's love for us all. Acts remind us that as new life grows in and emerges an egg, so too Jesus has come to give you new life that lasts forever. The crown of the church is a reminder of two things. Jesus was and is indeed the king. Breaking of bread and sharing it at Easter is a reminder of Christ who was crucified at as our bread of life, who gave us his body and blood at the Last Supper. The symbols of Easter bring us sadness and joy as we connect with Jesus on this Easter day. What will you hold? 
wear move share or give in celebration of this momentous occasion language we feel most comfortable. Let us pray with confidence as our risen Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who has burst from the grave with glorious victory, give you to share in the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.